Our first lesson is going to be on points, lines, and planes. So a lot of vocabulary, and that's one thing about geometry that you will find, is that there is a lot of vocabulary, lots of definitions, lots of terminology to know throughout the year. Okay, our first word is point. This is a single location or position having no size or dimension. Normally you see a small little dot and a capital letter beside it. And so when you see this, I just call this point S. So I would just write an S. I don't have to draw the little point symbol. But this right here is a point and it's just a specific point in space. And I call it point S. Okay, space is a defined, it's um, the set of all points. A line, this is a flat surface, it has no thick thickness and it extends forever in both directions. So this is a line, the arrows on both ends indicate that it goes forever this way and it goes forever this way. And that's specifically what a line does, it goes forever in both directions. So to name a line, we use any two points on the line. So A and B are the two points on the line, so I can name it line AB. So you draw a symbol with two arrows on both ends and I call it line AB or I could flip it around and call it line BA. Another way we can name a line is we can use a single lowercase letter. So this little lowercase letter that you see there I can also call it line T. So I write the word line and then I use that little lowercase letter. So T isn't a point on the line so I can just call it line T since that's not a point or if you have two points on the line then you do the line symbol with the two points. So whenever you're naming a line we use two points or if there's a single lowercase letter we can use that. So let's try one. In this picture here I know this is a line because it goes forever in both directions as indicated by the arrows. So if I want to name it, I just pick any two points on the line. So R and S are points. So I can call it line RS. S and T are two points on the line. So I can call it line ST. R and T, those are two points on the line. So I can call it line RT. And of course I could flip these around and call it line SR if I wanted to. But these two mean the same thing or I could flip these around, I could call it line TS, but they mean the same thing, or I could flip these around and I could call it line TR, but these two mean the same, these two mean the same, these two mean the same. And then if I happen to have a little lowercase letter, let's say I have a little lowercase um, Y, then I could write the word line and I could call it line Y. So Y isn't actually a point on the line, it's just another way of identifying the line. So when you name a line, we either use two points total or a little lowercase letter. Okay, next word, collinear points. In the word collinear, you will see the word line. So collinear points are points that are on the same line. If you can connect points with one straight line, those are said to be collinear points. If you can't connect the three points with one straight line, then those are called non-collinear. I can't connect these points with one straight line. It would take two lines to be able to connect all three of them. So if you can connect points with one straight line, that's called collinear. <coughs> okay, we are gonna save these examples for when I see you in class, just to make sure that you're understanding what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the back of that page. And we're gonna learn about a segment. So a segment is a part of a line. It has two endpoints and all the points between them. It has a start and a stop. It doesn't go forever in both directions. It starts and it stops. So this is an example of a line segment right here. And when you name a line segment, you use two points, just like we did with the line. Except for when I draw the symbol, I don't put arrows on both ends. I just call it line segment AB 
or I can call it line segment BA. But these two mean the same thing. So a line is two points, a segment is two points. But the symbol up above is different. A segment has a start, and it has a stop, and then it's just everything in between. Okay, array. For array, we're going to use um, two points as well. But this is a part of a line. It has only one endpoint, and it extends forever in one direction. So if I draw this right here, just to make it stand out a little bit more, you can see that this ray, it starts at D, and it goes forever and ever and ever in the direction of C. So when I write it, I write it like this. It starts at D, so no arrow. It goes forever in the direction of C, so C gets the arrow above it. If I had ray CD, it would look like this. Where this one, it starts at C, and it goes forever in the direction of D, that would be written like this. It starts at C, and it goes forever in the direction of D. So a ray has a start, and then it goes forever in the other direction. Okay, opposite rays. Opposite rays, there are two rays that have the same endpoint, and they form a line. So, what they do is, they both start at the same spot. One goes one way, the other goes the other way. But they have to start at the same spot. They have a common endpoint. So, an example would be, just to color it out, this one right here, and this one right here. So you can see they both start at R, they have that common endpoint. One goes in the direction of Q forever, and one goes forever in the direction of S forever. So this one I'm going to call ray RQ and I have to put the arrow over the Q because it's going in the direction of Q forever. And the other one that makes the opposite ray with it is ray RS. It starts at R and it goes forever in the direction of S. So S is the one that gets the arrow over it. So this is the pair of opposite rays. They have the same starting spot. One goes one way, one goes the other way. Okay. The rest of this page is just basically examples, so I'm just going to go through this with you in class next time I see you. Let's move on to the next page. Okay, naming a plane. A plane is a flat surface that has no thickness and it extends forever. Technically, that's its definition. In this class, you can think of a plane as um, the top of your desk or the whiteboard or a wall. So that's typically how we think of it, you know, in, in our life. With a plane, we typically use three points. So the thing about those three points, when we name it, is it has to be at least three. So that means three or more. And if we use three points, they have to be non-collinear points. So looking over here, A, B, D. See how I can connect those with one straight line? Since those can be connected with one straight line, those are called collinear. So I have to use three non-collinear points. So I could call it plane A, B, C, which you see here. I could call it plane B, D, C, because those are non-collinear. I could call it plane A, D, C, Because ADC, those are non-collinear. Or, since it says at least three, I can use three or more. I could call it plane ABDC. ABDC. I can't connect those with one straight line, so they're definitely non-collinear. So three or more means three or more than that. Okay, another way to name a plane is if there happens to be a single capital letter with 
no point symbol beside it. So if you see a single capital letter like that, then we can just call it plain P, or whatever that capital letter is. So over here, if there was a capital letter like that, I could call it plain R. But what I can't do is I can't call it plain ADR because R is not actually a point on the plane. So let me write that, plane ADR. And I'm going to X that out. I can't call it plane ADR because R is not a point on the plane. R is just a single capital letter. That is just another way to name a plane. So if you don't have the single capital letter, then we have to use three points. So if you'll look back, with me for a second. When you name a line, we typically use two points, unless there's a lowercase letter. When you name a segment, you use two points. When you name a ray, you use two points. But when you get to the plane, we use three points, unless there's a capital letter without a point symbol beside it. Okay. Let's see here. Another word on this page I want to talk about is the word coplanar. Coplanar are points that lie in the same plane. So points R, S, T, and U above, those are coplanar because they all belong to this plane right here. Okay, we are going to practice the rest of those next time I see you couple other things I just want to talk about real quick are these three postulates. This first one says through any two points there's exactly one line. So no matter what two points you draw, you can only draw one line through them. So through any two points there's exactly one line. Okay, the other one is if two lines intersect, they intersect in exactly one point. So these two lines here they intersect at point C. So whenever two lines intersect, they intersect in just one point. Okay, and then this last one is about two planes. If two planes intersect, they intersect in a line. So let's first look for plane RST. I'm going to locate those three letters, R, S, T. What part of the box do those three points belong to? the bottom of the box. So plane RST is talking about the bottom of the box here. Remember to name a plane, you only have to use three points, and you can use four if you want, but RST, those are three non-collinear points, so that's how I can name the bottom of the, the box. And then plane R STW, let's locate that plane. So let's find S, let's find T, and let's find W. What part of the box do those three belong to? The side over here. So STW is referring to this plane right here. Can you tell where the two line or the two planes overlap? They overlap all the way across this segment. We technically say it's line ST because remember planes are supposed to extend forever in both directions even though it looks like segment ST to us. I would take segment ST, but technically, because planes extend forever in all directions, it's technically a line. But I would take either answer from you. Okay, we have a lot of words here that we talked about. Hopefully you're not too confused. And we'll go over some of these examples tomorrow and see how you do. Smiley face.